this is John from caveofprogramming.com and this is the third in the series on Java multithreading from caveofprogramming.com and um, in this tutorial we're going to start looking at the synchronized keyword in Java and we're going to look at why you need it and what kind of problems you get with um, unsynchronized threads. So I'm in Eclipse and I've got a um, I've got a class created here with a main method and I'm just going to create an instance of this class because I want to give it some instance variables and I'll give it a method called um, public void do work um, just to have a kind of starting point to run and I'm going to say app here dot do work so I'm just going to run this method in my main program Okay, so um, in here, uh, I'm going to have um, some threads, a couple of threads that run, and I'm going to give app a private um, variable of type int, which I'll call count, and I'll set that initially equal to zero, although actually it would be initialized to zero by default anyway, because it's an instance variable. And in do work here, I'm going to create a couple of threads. So I'm going to say thread t1 equals new thread. And using the technique that I showed you um, in a previous tutorial, here I'm going to say new runnable and open a bracket and I'm going to give that a public void run method. And I'm going to put some code in run that's going to run in its own thread. So here I'm going to say, um, let's have a loop and I'll say for int equals naught, int i equals naught, i uh, less than 10,000 and it has to be 10,000 to um, display the problem that I want to show you, or at least um, at least 10,000 or so, and I++. Plus plus. And in this loop, I'm just going to increment count. So I'm just going to say count++. Plus plus. Now I'm going to have another one of these, um, these threads. So let's just copy that, paste it down here, and have a thread T2. And then I'm going to start both of these threads, so t1.start and t2.start. So both loops are going to be running at the same time, roughly. And then I'm going to say sysout uh, count is, and let's see the value of count. So we've got two threads trying to increment count 10,000 times each uh, at the same time. Um, so they're both accessing the same variable here. And then we uh, we um, display the value of the variable. Um, now you might al already notice a problem with this code, um, and I'm going to run it, and we'll see what happens. So if I run it, it says count is zero. And the reason for that is that um, here I start both of the threads, but start um, always returns immediately um, because it spawns. Um, a thread, an extra thread, that's kind of the whole point of it. So this, this executes, and then in the main thread, this executes, and then this executes. And then after this, um, these loops are continuing to run. So basically we're, we're outputting the value of count before these loops have really had time to get started. So to fix that, we need to wait until both of these threads have finished executing before we display the value of count. And of course, we'll expect count to have a value of 20,000 because both threads are incrementing it 10,000 times. So to wait for the threads to finish, I can use the thread.join method, um, which literally just waits. It just pauses execution of the thread that it's called in, which is the main thread here, until um, the threads are finished. So join here won't return until this thread's finished. And then this won't return until this thread's finished. And these throw um, join throws a interrupted exception. So I have to surround with try catch. And let's put just both in the same try catch for convenience. Now if I run this, um, we've got count is 20,000. So you think, OK, my program's fine. Um, but actually it isn't. Let's run it a few more times and see what happens. So 20,000, and here we've got one that isn't 20,000. It's um, 
11,560. And you see sometimes it works, often it works, and other times it doesn't. And what's going on here? Um, why does it do that? Um, the reason is that when you increment count, it looks like um, what we call an atomic operation. It looks like a thing that happens in one step, but it isn't. Um, it's actually sort of equivalent to this. Count equals count plus uh, one. So there are three steps here, believe it or not. First, we get the value of count. We get the current value. Then we add one to it. Oops. Then we add one to it. And then we store it back in count. So we're reading it, incrementing it, and then storing it back in the original variable. Three steps. And in human terms, those three steps happen very quickly. But um, from a computer point of view, there's, uh, there's considerable time between each step because the computer's continuing to do other things while this loop's running. So it's kind of like um, you fetch the value of count, then other things happen on your computer, and then you increment it and more things happen. Then a bit later, you store it back in count. And uh, now think about what happens if two threads are trying to do that at the same time. Imagine that... Um, that count has the value 100, let's say. Um, if both threads increment count, we expect it to be 102. But in fact, this, this thread could fetch the value of count when it's 100. And then, then this thread fetches the value of count when it's 100. This thread increments it, and then sometime later stores it back in the original variable. So count is now 101. Then this thread increments its um, it's um, read of the count variable from 100 to 101 and then it, that this thread stores 101 back into this original variable so the point is that both threads read the value of count when it was 100 um, and it, it could even be worse than that like this thread could read count when it's 100 and this thread might increment it twice in that time before this thread gets around to storing its incremented value back. So you can see that um, basically um, some of the increments are being skipped because both threads read the value when it's um, 100, let's say. And uh, what we really need to do is we, we need to find some way of making sure that in, in that time when a thread reads the value of count, increments it and stores it back, no other thread can get at it and change it. Um, now, the simplest way, actually, if you've just got a simple variable like this, uh, a simple in integer that you want to increment, would be to um, to make it an atomic integer, um, because uh, atomic integer is a specialized class that allows you to. It has a method that allows you to uh, increment your count variable in one step. And you might think, uh, if you've seen the last tutorial, you might think, well, declaring it volatile will help. And, uh, well, it might help a bit, but it's not going to fix the basic underlying problem because the basic problem isn't really to do with caching. That might be an additional problem. It's to do with this interleaving. Um, so to fix it, we need the synchronized um, keyword. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a method here, public void, uh, increment, let's call it increment. And in increment, I'm going to say count plus plus. And I'm going to change these to use that increment method. Now, this uh, won't fix anything in itself. So let's try running this. Uh, we've still got problems. Um, but what I can do is I can say that um, increment is synchronized. I just add the synchronized keyword on here. And now when we run it, magically, it's always um, 20,000. We've got rid of those problems with the threads interleaving. And uh, what synchronized actually does is um, every object in Java, let's just close this console. I don't really know how to. There we go. Okay, every object in um, Java has um, what we call an intrinsic lock or a monitor lock. Um, it's, you could also call it a mutex. And um, 
if you have uh, if you call a synchronized method of an object in this case we're calling the synchronized method of this app object here um, you can't you you have to acquire the intrinsic lock before you can call it and uh, the thing is that um, only one thread can acquire the intrinsic lock at a time um, and if one thread um, acquires the intrinsic lock um, and runs this method and if another thread at the same time tries to call this method then um, the second thread will just have to wait it will just quietly wait until the first thread uh, releases the intrinsic lock um, by um, the method finishing executing so um, so every object has one of these intrinsic locks and only one thread can acquire it at a given time and a method mark synchronize can only be called by um, behind the scenes acquiring the intrinsic lock and that's why that um, fixes this problem and um, you need to be aware of this um, whenever um, you're, you've got multiple threads accessing shared data um, and by the way um, you don't need to declare this volatile now um, because if you've declared um, if, you're, if you're running something in a synchronized block then it's, um, it's guaranteed um, that the current state of the variables in here, shared variables, will be visible to all, thread, with all threads, which is what Volatile does. It just guarantees that all threads can see the current state of a variable and Synchronize handles that itself. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. And in the next tutorial in this series, we're going to look at how you can use lock objects explicitly um, to... Um, to improve and to make much more efficient code uh, in some circumstances where um, by using multiple locks because it's not always um, it's not always ideal to just use the one intrinsic lock that you have in your um, with your object because often um, you want uh, multiple locks to protect multiple different things that threads are doing and we're going to look at that in the next tutorial so this code is going to be on caveofprogramming.com and you can also find the um, more um, free tutorials and some um, kind of premium paid tutorials as well if you're interested on stuff like um, Java, web programming and Swing and various other things. Uh, so that's it for now and until next time, happy coding. <laughs>